Today I'll be speaking about Mary Alt Dutcher, Fort Collins' first female pilot, member of the Betsy Ross Flying Corps, mother of two, and psychology professor at CSU. Her life was one of both privilege and loss and bravery of many kinds. Mary was born in 1911 and grew up at 714 West Mountain. There's the house there on the right. Her grandfather, Alexander, was the man for whom the town of Alt was named. Mary's father, Winton, was a prominent attorney in Fort Collins with an office at 129 East Mountain. Mary's mother was Colorado-born Nellie Woodard Alt. After high school, Mary attended Colorado Agricultural College. There she is on the freshman class roster on the left and worked in her father Winton's office as a stenographer. That's a picture of Winton's staff in the middle from about 1930. Winton's the one with the bow tie. Mary's not in this lovely picture, but she was working at the office at the time it was taken. Mary's family was wealthy enough to afford her flying lessons, a very expensive proposition in 1930 when she began flying. One of our oral history informants mentions that Mary's brother, Will, had a car while he attended Colorado Agricultural College, which would have been quite rare at the time. So how did this young woman get such a strong urge to fly? Mary, along with the rest of the world in the 1920s, would have been enthralled by tales of bravery that circulated after World War I. There were several male pilots in Fort Collins that Mary would have heard of in her youth, probably even met. Aerial displays were all the rage in the 1920s and women were a big part of that era of flight. By the end of 1929, only 117 American women had earned their pilot's license. In 1936, two female pilots became the first women to win the prestigious Bendix Transcontinental Speed Race. It was during this time interval that Mary learned to fly. By May 29, 1930, Mary had logged seven hours and 16 minutes in the air. On July 11, 1930, Mary became the first Fort Collins woman to make a solo airplane flight. And on March 24, 1931, Mary received her pilot's license. The picture in the middle is from 1931. Sorry, the picture on the left is from 1931. Mary's the woman on the right, and Denver pilot Betty Martin is on the left. The 1932 article on the right, ironically, mentions Mary's fear of heights. That poster in the middle is for the Betsy Ross Flying Corps which Mary joined in 1931. The Betsy Ross Flying Corps was a pre-World War II organization of female pilots in existence for about five years, from 1929 to 1933, and topping out at 100 member pilots nationwide. These women supported the Army Air Corps by flying ambulance, transport, and passenger planes during emergencies. Mary's flights continued to make the news in Fort Collins. That Courier article on the left announces Mary's membership in the Betsy Ross Flying Corps. Her fellow inductees are shown in that picture in the middle, and they are, from left, Maury Kraft and Betty Martin, both of Denver, Ruth Evans of Greeley, and Mary Alt. At far right is Vera Dawn Walker. Not pictured is Lillian Moses of Greeley, the fifth inductee. In the Courier article, Vera Walker describes the Betsy Ross Flying Corps as, quote, a patriotic organization formed in the interest of national defense. Members are trained in case of war to fly ambulance planes and transport and passenger ships to relieve men flyers for combat service. In this way, the organization would render the same service in the air that the Women's Motor Corps did on the battlefields during the World War." End quote. On the right is a brief mention of Mary's first solo flight, and on the far right is an article about a Ford Tri-Motor that came through Fort Collins in 1934 and which Mary co-piloted. So, life goes on for Mary. She renewed her pilot's license, 
continued to work for her father in his law office and worked for United Airlines at the airport in Denver. She spoke publicly about aviation in various places throughout the 1930s. Gradually, articles about her flying ceased to appear in the newspaper. Mary wed William Dutcher in 1938. That's the pic of her that ran in the newspaper, along with the marriage record report, a bit of info about Mary that ran with the wedding announcements, and her husband William's registration card. William Clarence Dutcher, born and raised in Buena Vista, Colorado, worked for the Mountain States Telephone and Telegraph Company. His work took the family, Bill, Mary, and two children, Bill Jr. and John, to New Mexico in April 1945. The stories of fly girls from the 1930s and later continue to fascinate us to this day. These covers, shown here, are from books published in just the past few years, but what people don't often know about are the personal and professional difficulties that many of these pioneering women encountered. Transitioning from a life that was allowed to young single women of the 1920s and 30s to what was expected of women, married or otherwise, in the 1930s and 40s was not easy. Several of the female pilots highlighted in these books encountered bumps along the way, including divorces, alcoholism, thwarted careers, and trouble adjusting to life after years of sponsored flying. Mary suffered her own tragedy. In May of 1945, her husband William killed himself. Here are a few newspaper articles about William Dutcher and the circumstances around his death. He was found in his car in Albuquerque, New Mexico. One article tells us he was discovered by Mary and a neighbor and that William, quote, had long been in ill health, which included a nervous breakdown, end quote. I don't know if William's choice was related to the war, but given the date of his suicide, May 7th, 1945, the victory of the Allied forces in Europe, it does make me wonder. What we do know is that after seven years of marriage, Mary was left with no husband, the devastating impact of his sudden death, and the responsibility of raising two very young boys. So what do you do? Well, if you're Mary, you draw on the support of your family. Her parents brought her home to Fort Collins, and in November of 1945, Mary spent time with her brother Bill, who had just returned to Fort Collins after distinguished service in World War II. Mary found the courage to move on and in a spectacular way. She went back to college, finished her baccalaureate in 1947, her master's degree in 1948, and became assistant professor of psychology and education at CSU, which was then called Colorado A&M. That article on the left is from 1950. In that year, Mary lectured about marriage and the family. The picture in the center is from 1952. Mary was the first at Colorado A&M to teach personality dynamics and counseling. She also taught the psychology of exceptional children and abnormal psychology. By the time the 1967 article on the right was published, Mary was involved with several organizations that provided mental health services to Coloradoans. In this article, she discusses mental health service needs for the elderly. Over the years, Mary continued to speak about mental health, and one of her main messages was that, quote, good mental health for future generations begins with helping small children learn to live in a world as it really is, not as we want it to be, end quote. Let's take a moment to reflect what mental health services were available in the 1950s and 60s compared to now. The National Mental Health Act wasn't passed until 1946. It wasn't until 1953 that Colorado created a state association that coordinated mental health services. When Mary entered the field of psychology, therapy would have just been for the wealthy. The average person struggling with mental health disruptions had few options for getting help. I like to think that Mary's quiet efforts, both at CSU and in her ancillary volunteer work, helped change all that. Now let's compare that to now 
and look at these images from our recent museum exhibit called Mind Matters. The family guide shown here specifically addresses the needs of children, the very topic Mary was among the first to lecture about at the university. Mary Alt Dutcher died in April 2004 in Sun City, Arizona, having moved there sometime in 1976 or 77. I don't know much about what she did with the last 25 years or so of her life, but I do know that she loyally and regularly supported her CSU sorority, Gamma Phi Beta, and is represented in a display at the Air and Space Museum in DC. And this is what she chose to say about herself in that display. Private pilot's license number 19,400 issued to me on March 24, 1931. First woman pilot in Rocky Mountain region. I didn't make a career of it, but I never lost my love for flying. Thank you for listening.